In this video, we're going to solve a couple quadratic inequalities. Um, kind of general idea that you uh, use to file or use to solve a quadratic inequality is to first factor it or use quadratic formula to find the zeros of the quadratic portion of the inequality. Uh, then you put those zeros on a number line, which will create uh, um, some ranges of numbers uh, that you're going to test to see uh, which range of numbers actually makes the inequalities true. Uh, so let's jump into one of these examples. Um, let's try x squared minus 9x plus 14 is less than or equal to 0. So again, I'm going to start by factoring. Um, both examples today will factor. It makes uh, life a lot easier when they do factor. Um, I need a couple numbers that multiply to 14 but add to negative 9. And I think those numbers are negative 7 and negative 2 and find out uh, where the zeros are. So I want to see where does x minus 7 equals 0, and where does x minus 2 equals 0. And that occurs when x is 7 and x is 2. Uh, now I want to put both these numbers on a number line. Um, number line doesn't have to be all that great, just uh, so that you can see um, these points on the number line and the uh, regions that they create. Uh, be careful here, these numbers are not in uh, order. So the 2 actually is on the left, 7 is on the right. Um, and as you can see, uh, what I've done with this number line, putting those points on there, I've created uh, three regions of numbers. There's numbers that are less than 2, there's numbers greater than 2 but less than 7, and then there's numbers greater than 7. So what I'm going to do is pick a representative point from each of those regions. Uh, and it doesn't matter what points are in the regions, just as long as they're inside the region. So I might pick a 0. I usually try to pick a 0, a 1, or a negative 1 whenever I can. Those three numbers are really easy to work with usually. Um, I might try a 5, it doesn't really matter. Uh, or let's say in this region over here that's greater than 7, let's try 8. Um, so the idea at this point is to substitute these representative numbers back into the original inequality to see which of the solution regions are true. So doing that, I'm going to see well, when x equals 0, I'm going to use this inequality up here. So I want to test, is 0 squared minus 9 times 0 plus 14 less than or equal to 0? Uh, I believe that comes out to 14. So in this case, 14 is not less than 0. So I will put a no up here. Um, any number in this region will make this a false statement. So whether you entered a negative 10, a, a 0.5, a, uh, anything like that, it'll come up with a number that is not less than 0. So that whole region it would provide a false uh, inequality in this case. So I'm going to test the next uh, point and that would be uh, 5. So if x equals 5, I want to see that's 5 squared minus 9 times 5 plus 14. Does that really, or is that really less than or equal to 0? So I've got 25 minus 45 plus 14. Is that really less than or equal to 0? I believe that comes out to negative 6, which is less than 0. So I'll say that's a yes for this region. And the last number I've got to test is an 8. So when x equals 8, we got 8 squared minus 9 times 8 plus 14. Is that really less than or equal to 0? So I think that's 64 minus 72 plus 14. I think that comes out to a 6. So 6 is not less than um, 0, so I'll put a no on that region. Um, so if I wanted to fill in my number line first, I notice that this is a less than or equal to, so these p uh, spots both get closed dots because the 2 and the 7 are included with the equal and I want to shade in the yes region so that would be right there so that's where that uh, solution is on a graph or on the number line graph uh, if I want to write this with a um, interval my interval goes from 2 to 7 and I use brackets to indicate that uh, it's, it's a less than or equal to part straighten that up. Uh, also I could write this as a inequality. I could do 2 is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to 7. So there's our first example. Um, 
our second example, let's do greater than just to change things up. Uh, let's try x squared plus 6x minus 27 is greater than 0. And I want to follow the same pattern that I did before. I want to factor this. I need a couple of numbers that multiply to negative 27 but add up to 6. I think those numbers are 9 and negative 3. Now I just need to set those equal to 0 to find my um, boundary points. So x plus 9 equals 0 and that happens when x is negative 9 and x minus 3 equals 0 when x equals 3. And again I go to my number line. I'll put just be a rough sketch of a number line. Negative numbers live to the left of the positive numbers. I don't uh, make that mistake. Um, and again, I just need, I have three solution regions that I've listed here. One is when numbers are greater than 3. I've got a region where numbers are between negative 9 and 3. And i got a, another region where numbers are less than negative 9. So I just need some representative points. I'll pick a negative 10. Uh, I think 0 is another good point between there. And let's try 4, let's say. At this point, I want to do something a little different. Um, instead of going through all of the... Um, evaluating that I did over here by hand. I'm going to let the calculator do that work. Um, that way I know it will be correct. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing. It's just the calculator is doing some of that work. The numbers that the calculator gives for this expression, when I plug a negative 10, a 0, and a uh, 4 in, I'll test those to see if they're greater than 0. So I need to enter this uh, expression x squared plus 6x minus 27 in the calculator. I don't care about the graph. I want to know what the table is. Curious is first about negative 10. If I arrow up to x equals negative 10, I find out that that left-hand side of the expression is 13. So when x equals 10, I'm wanting to know is 13 greater than 0? Well, that is true. So I will write yes right there. So there's the same thing I did when I went through this example, except I just let the calculator do um, this arithmetic for me. I want to test now when x is 0. If I go back to the calculator, come down the table to where x is 0, I find that the expression on the left is negative 27. And I want to test, does that really, uh, is that greater than 0? And that is not true. So I'll put a no for that region. And my last region I want to test is when x is 4. And if I come down the table, I find when I substitute a 4 into that inequality, a 13 comes out. So 13 is greater than 0, so I'll say that's a yes. So as before, if I fill in my number line, uh, since it's not an equal to inequality, I know these get open circles. Uh, and I want to shade where the yeses are. So I would shade to the left, and I'd shade to the right. Uh, if I want to write that as an interval, uh, the interval notation for that would be from negative infinity. Remember, negative infinity gets the parentheses because you can't really equal negative infinity to negative 9, which we don't equal negative 9 either, so it gets parentheses, or from 3 out to infinity. If I want to write that as an inequality, I would write uh, x is uh, less than 9, excuse me, negative 9, or x is greater than 3.